country cuss show on a Wednesday hump day report, hump day after the Christmas. So I hope every one of y'all had a merry, merry Christmas this year. And I hope all, some of y'all got some lap steel guitars or some ditto looping pedals or a volume pedal or something in that neighborhood. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go over some of the equipment to get you started if you just got your first lap steel. And uh, hopefully you got some kind of tone bar. Now I'm going to show you. These are tone bars right here, and there's a big difference between them. And uh, this one here, that's an old round one. I think it's an M, yes, yeah, MSA. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see it in there, but anyway, I had an MSA pedal steel guitar one time, and the tone bar come with it. I've also got a showbud tone bar that's laying in there next to my show bud pedal steel guitar or it's in the case one or the other but anyway it's stamped on the back and it's stamped show bud and this right here I'm going to show you I'm going to slide in a little bit there folks but there's, a, there's two tone bars side by side alright this one I bought off of Amazon and it wasn't very much it was a good looking tone bar, but I don't like it for one reason. You see the finger groove right there? Compared to the finger groove on the Dunlap, see how much wider, and my finger fits down in there. I don't quite go in there, these sides are cutting into my finger, so it's kind of uncomfortable. I can use it. I play it, I take it out with my Dobro a lot of times to play and all, but the most complex, and that's where everybody's different. Lay your finger in there when you're going to buy one, go to the music store somewhere if you can, and they're going to be about $25, I can tell you that right up front. It's stainless steel bar, they don't give them away, uh, very heavy, but anyway, you're going to need one because you're going to have to use that to create your notes and your chords on your guitar. All right, next, get your tone bar, and now pitch, that's kind of discretionary. I've got different kind of pitch. As you can see, I use a flat pitch, because I'm used to playing, I started out as a guitar player, but this is a thumb pitch, and it goes on your thumb like that right there. And, Of course, you got finger pitch, and I'm just trying to help the beginners out here. If you're you're a seasonal player, you can skip all this. Yeah, all right, that's a finger pick, and it goes on like that. See how it goes on? What do you do? You pinch it. All right, and usually you use two or three of them, and you put them on, but you have the flat picking side to the palm of your hand. See how I got it? Not like that. I had a friend of mine that kept insisting he wanted to put them on and play like that and every time he'd come up on his string, a lot of times he'd break a string because his pitch was on backwards. Now I got this one hung on my finger and it's starting to hurt. Woo! I mean I don't like them. I use a flat pick so what I do I pinch my pick like I'm pinching it to play guitar. Right, but I still got these three fingers that I can play with like patient with your learning. You don't learn this stuff in one or two days or one or two weeks. And that's the problem most people have that I've encountered and try to teach. 
they want to take two or three lessons and they think they ought to play good as I can. Well, I've been playing for many, many, 45 years or more. Because I got my first guitar and I joined band and uh, played the trumpet, the clarinet, uh, when I was in the high school band. And I took music lessons, I took guitar lessons, and believe it or not, uh, the guitar guy that taught me is still living today. I see him occasionally. We've actually played some shows together and all here in Cordell. But anyway, so what we got now, we got your lap steel, we got your bar, and uh, Tone bar, I don't know, it's up to you. You go out and you put your finger in there and see what's comfortable. Also, the proper way to hold this thing is put your pointing finger, that one right there, all right? Put your pointing finger that you point with, and you got your thumb right there. Put your pointing finger right there, take that and put your thumb up against it. Take that next finger right here and place in it, because that's called an anvil, and if you look, Whenever I get it in there, see how it looks in the back of my hand. All right, I got these two fingers free. Now, what do I use them for? Very important. Uh, y'all know if y'all been watching my show, I call them my dragon fingers. And when I'm playing the guitar, I, I can use them to lay down first, see? And I can also use that to mute. them up. Them fingers always, even if I'm playing a single note, but my fingers are going down. Mainly that second finger when I'm playing single note. Demonstrating and showing. Alright, we got uh, your guitar, and of course you're gonna need an amplifier, and I'm not gonna swing around and show you because you got too many options now. But the most important feature that I found to get on an amplifier, and I'm using this one you're hearing, is uh, not very expensive. It's called a Piva Viper 1. And I bought it because it was lightweight, and it's got a great reverb on it. Now that's Something that's important, listen to the reverb. Here, when I kill the note, it still, it don't die like, it, it, you can hear it. thing now this one the cool thing about this amp is you got your uh, gain knob you got different channels too it's got a bass channel it's got an acoustic channel but I'm not selling these PV amps but I, all my amps in here and selling right now two are PVs and I got I got some more in the bag but I've got uh, one rolling Course amp, it's called a Roland Course 90, 91, and I've got a custom. Well, I got two custom amps. I forgot. I got, well, I got three. I got two out there in the shop, one in here, and I got a little cheap Fender amp, 
uh, that I don't ever use. I don't like the way it sounds, really. But it it, it ain't a it ain't a Princeton or a Fender Twin Reverb now. This is one of the little bitty amps. And I got a Roland, believe it or not, uh, called a Street Cube. That's also got some great sounds in it, and you can run it on batteries. That's another option. But them amps are a little pricey compared to this PV Viper. You can pick the PV Viper up, you use for around sixty, seventy dollars at Guitar Center or somewhere a lot of times. Okay, well moving right along. After you get your guitar, you got your uh, tone bar, you got your pick. Now the most important thing is you got to tune it. So, tuners, they're an option. You got the clamp on tuners, which on a thick guitar like this one, this is my teaching guitar. See how thick the headstock is? It's thick as the guitar itself. Well, guess what? I won't be clamping this little clamp on tuner on there because it won't fit. Now, can I use this? Yes. How? You say, all right, let's say I'm going to tune the guitar. I'm going to tune it from, don't matter, you can tune from the bottom that way, or you can go back and tune it across. All right, but if I'm going to tune up, up here first, I'm going to clamp it on that tuning peg, and I'm going to put it up there where I can read it and turn it on. And then I just pick it up the vibration. I can tell I was low. Now I'm tuning it. I'm gonna go over with you. We're gonna tune this guitar live right here in open E. I put that across here somewhere, open E, so I got it in a E. chromatic tuner because you can actually set this one up and I did a lesson on it you can set it up in a in a frequency ranges of 440 or you can go to 432 which is in tune with the earth according to some of these people all right let's go back and finish tuning it so we hitting the beast ring I got it tuned all right there's your E now it was tight and what happened was we under the coldest few days in the world and the strings have tightened up. I go down, now I'm coming back up to the tuning. And I'm plucking the strings. And what that's doing is picking up the vibrations. Alright? That was a that was E, E, E. And now I'm gonna tune to a G sharp. much. Alright, the next one's gonna be a B, so I'm gonna tune to a B. And I'm bringing it back up. I always like to bring my strings below my tuning and then back up, cause when you're turning them down, you can stop at the tuning, but a lot of times your, your tuning peg will tend to back off a half. So bring it up and recheck it. Perfect. Alright. Now I got to tune the next string is gonna be a E. But the tuners are on it so I take the tuner off and I'm just gonna clip it over somewhere uh, right here. There we go. Preferably, uh, making sure it's off, I can, and it ain't. All right, now the 
you, but it picks up vibration, not sound. However, if you got one of these tumors right here, the cool thing about this one is you can go, let's say you uh, got a record or you on YouTube and you're hearing one of your favorite songs and you want to play along with it but you don't know what key it in or what some of the notes they play it, you can actually turn this on and you can get an idea. I got to get it turned on. by watching it and see exactly what tuning they're in. Also, this is chromatic tuning, so you can check a tuning on the piano or whatever. Also, another button on here that I like is a calibrating button, and you can press that button and hold it and let somebody play a C note or whatever note on the piano and then tune your guitar up to 440 or to the tuning that the piano was because pianos in churches are all tuned different because some of them's too old to bring up the 440 without breaking them. Alright, so on with the equipment. Now, we got your uh, guitar, we talked about the amp, we talked about the tone bar, we talked about the pick, we just got through with the tuner. Now, another thing, and this is optional, I like to have and I keep this in my music room, and I use it on all my guitar. It's just a good, fine horsehair. It's a good paintbrush, one that is made for mental spirits and oil paint, because it's fine. I think there's nylon or something, but anyway, I know I use it for is dusting, and I've got two or three of these paintbrushes. But see, you can get in and out of the cracks and all easy. You get around your tuners, your knobs, and soft brush ain't gonna hurt nothing, it keeps the dust off. So that's a good thing to have. That's something you need in your toolbox with your guitar equipment. All right, now, now moving on, one of the things that I do take to all my shows, and this is one of my favorite, and this is a, a Dunlap volume pedal right here. Uh, and it don't, it's got an in and out. Let's see what else got. Got an in and out input, and the one over here, if you got a, a tuner you want to plug in, you can plug the tuner in it. So, and this one here is a manual one, that's what I call manual. It don't require a battery to operate it. All it is is a pot, a big pot in there, just like a pot that would be on the guitar. Now, on this setup that I'm using right here, uh, I've got a volume pedal over here. It's called a Mallory that is uh, digital. You got to have nine volt to power it. But I don't take it to shows, but I use it in here for a reason. And mostly for a kill switch. When I'm swapping, when I'm recording, I swap back from playing the lead guitar, the bass guitar, and whatever. I can cut it off like And see? I won't get all that ground. I can unplug and plug into anything else, change amps or whatever, and don't get that roaring sound. All right, now, and uh, there's a lot to this, ain't it? Because I'm not even, not even started good. But the next thing is, and you need to learn a little bit about music, but get your doggone book, people. <laughs> and books are noisy. But also, go up there and go to Google uh, Images and type in the word Nashville Number System. If you're not really uh, familiar with music, this will help you 100% because what it does, it references what key different things are played in. Now, in my book, I write down notes, <coughs> uh, Tunings, see I even write songs I got. This is a song that I wrote and I got a program on my computer that I can punch in the notes and they'll print out a sheet of music like this one. Uh, then I've got words to songs and I mean anything to do with music 
I put in this book. Oh, uh, I've got. I'm taking banjo lessons, so I put my banjo chords in there. I can open up this book, find my banjo chords when I'm playing banjo. I got a tab chart. I take the tabs over there to my printer, and I print me out a new chart, write down guitar tabs, and just just needs you a good book to keep in the things. I've got scales in that book and you know helpful hints and tips and tricks. Write it down because you'll be glad you did. I got some music when I was in a band in 19, I think 60, no 1975, something in there. I've still got the music. There was a lot of Creedence Clearwater music uh, and stuff like that. Now uh, when you want to learn and you want some help, but you got to play along with yourself, like I do a lot, I do have some friends that come over, we just jam, and that's another thing. If you're jamming with somebody, be patient. Let everybody be patient with each other, because when you first play with anybody, regardless who it is, you got to kind of learn their style and their licks and how they going to play, even if it's a song, you've played with other people a thousand times. Alright, now a ditto looping pedal, and I'll demonstrate all this later, a ditto looping pedal is a great way to learn how to find single notes, and I'm going to give you an example of it right now. I hope this video ain't getting too long, but I'm going to play uh, three chords, and that's an open E, then I'm going to play an A. to a B. Then I'm just going to raise up back to the E. Nothing fancy, so here we go. But see what I'm talking about. You can just go all over. You can play the uh, A like, or you could come up here. All right. So anyway, with that being said, you get the ideal. I hope. Practice, practice, practice. Don't expect to find these notes at first. The best thing to do is, first thing is, take some of my earlier lessons and look at them. Be sure to learn your guitar neck. Now, some of y'all are tuned up in open D, some Z, some Z9. It don't matter. Learn your neck. This is open E. First fret is a F. The second fret is, and that's where you get into either it's a F sharp or G flat. And that's a whole nother lesson on why they call it sharps and flat. It's the way the music was wrote. But anyway, E, F, I'm gonna say F sharp, G, G sharp, or now I'm gonna call it A flat. When we played in a gospel groove, we played in a lot of flat. That's A flat, that's A, that's B flat, B, 
Now that's C. And that's C sharp or D flat. And that's D. E flat. No, that's yeah, E flat, then E. And it starts over to the F again. So that's that's uh that's twelve. Twelve frets is all the notes you like to learn. Now you can count to twelve or you can do your alphabet. Alright? So, and then uh, if you notice the B from the C didn't have a C sharp, so it had a B. And that's a whole lesson in itself again too. However, now if you break a string or want to change the strings on your guitar, which I've noticed that a lot of guitars that come new, the strings are very light gauge and easy to break, but when you do when you do put new strings on, remember these little strings, the upper strings need a lot more round wrapping around your tuning peg than the big fat ones, because they break easier and you want to go round and round a few more times so that string goes over there and pulls back real smooth, not pulling up against the hole you poke it through to cut it like scissors. Now, I recommend, these are my favorite strings right here. These are the Dario. They call them, if you look right up on the top, they call them drop C, heavy gauge string. Anyway, they nickel round, heavy gauge string, and they're the EXL148 series. And I get these strings from a company called Just Strings. They're online, so you can go there and look them up, just strings. All right, another thing, if your guitar, now that right there is the bridge at the back, and the front's called the nut, and in between is the fretboard, and also the frets, the shiny silver thing. You don't have to have frets on a lap steel guitar, however. And then, of course, you got your pickup. This particular one's got a volume and a tone knob, which I keep both of them wide open. Don't even mess with them. A lot of the guitars I build, I don't even put them in there. But anyway, that's a adjustable bridge or saddle, whichever one you want to call it. And you can adjust it by the height. So what I recommend, if you got one of them, lay your bar on around at about the 12th fret. if you're getting a tone all the way across. Now I'm going to take my finger and mess up a string so we ain't going to have a tone all the way across. Alright, now if I had that, which sometimes you do get that, what you do is take a little Allen wrench and raise that up and get your strings flat. You want them all to be when you look down at like that right there, see how flat they are? Yes, sir, flat. And the uh, got to remember, the big string is a lot bigger round than the little string. So that means the little string probably going to have to be a hair higher. Now, how would that be said? Let me put this down. And I'm going to pick up my recording key, which is a different kind of lap steel. It's got a nut, just like the other one. Tuners are different, and it's also narrow like a guitar, so I could clamp the uh, tuner on. However, look at this. Now that right there is a different kind of pickup. This is called a P90. The other one's got a single coil, like a fender. But the bridge, or the saddle, check that out. It's just an L-shaped piece of metal, so it is not you're not able to adjust it. So when you get one, if you got one like that, don't worry. You, it's still workable. And sometimes, I, what I did, I went and put strings on it that I just showed you, because I order, I order them in bulk. I keep 10, 12 packs here. And uh, I don't sell them. I use them for myself. You can get them yourself by going to juststrings.com. But I took a little file and I had to hit, uh, I think these two in the middle to lower them just a hair to get, get them flat adjusted. But now when you're doing that, you need to be real careful. Uh, you know, and if you're not, if you're not good with a file or you don't have a good rat tail file, 
Tank doggone thing to uh, guitar shop. But anyway, get your book, and I keep my Nashville number chart, because what it does, let's say the band says we're going to play in the key, well, let's say an A, and we're going to play a 1, 4, 5 chord. Well, in the key of A, you can look it up. Right up here, the key of A, your uh, 1, 4, 5. You see the numbers right up here at the top. I'm looking at it backwards, so I can't tell what we're looking at. But anyway, the 1 chord's an A, 4 chord's a D, and the 5 chord's an E. Now, I already knew that, but in case you didn't, that's fine. Now, so you can do that, and then there's your uh, minor. You got the major and the minor. Sure. So you can look right there and tell now. See, you want to play to go to the two chord, which I do a lot of time. Playing in A, that'd be a B. <laughs> just like playing that G just now. And I went to the A chord to set myself up to go to the five chord. I was playing an A and then I dove down to a D. But that right there will help you learn a little bit about music theory and everybody goes to Nashville works in a recording studio. I think nowadays it's pretty much a recommended thing that they know and all. But I want to thank y'all for stopping by Country Cuz. We'll have, please leave a comment. Did you like the lesson? Did you learn anything? Did you get something out of it? Or do we need to move on to something higher advanced? Y'all let me know, because y'all were the ones I'm trying to help, not me. I'm beyond help, they say, but I'm trying to help y'all. So, if you're not a subscriber, go down there, wherever it is. I think down there, but they may have moved it. They move stuff around on here, and, uh, you know, but anyway, you hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like the lesson. I appreciate it. If I missed something that you wanted to know about, uh, let me know that. I ain't gonna go into the weather because y'all got worse weather than I do up north, but I don't believe I've ever seen it this cold. We got cats and we keep little pans of water out. Every night this week so far, I've had to get up and dump the ice. The whole water that thick would be froze solid. Now, we let some of the what I call the house cat. We got one, we let it stay in the house at night. It don't like the cold weather. Every time it goes out, it starts shaking. But the rest of the cats, they seem to love it. They running and playing hard. I want to appreciate or thank y'all for stopping by. And like I said, leave a comment down there and let me know what you thought about the lesson. Did I leave something out you wanted to know about? If you did, let me know. I'll put it in the next lesson. I sure want to thank y'all. See you later.